I'm sorry, you gotta bear with me for a second. This coffee is so good. <laughs> I just got that espresso machine. It is amazing. I've been making Americanos, lattes, cappuccinos, freaking pumpkin spice lattes, everything. It is fantastic. Okay. What's up crew? Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. As I promised on my Instagram story today, we are going to be talking about vintage clothing. I recently went on a vintage clothing hunt and I got a couple pieces over here I want to show you. So let's get started. So before we jump into this video, I want to let you know that I did not go to any like hype vintage stores to like pick up some really cool pieces or anything like that. I literally just went to Goodwill, which is what I think that most people do anyways, but I wasn't about going to like a vintage clothing store and purchasing a $250 Guns N' Roses t-shirt. That's just not, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, I went to my local Goodwill and I picked up all of this stuff and I found some really cool pieces. So we'll talk about each piece specifically and why I chose it and we'll also talk about what I do and what I look for when I go shopping for vintage clothing. So we'll start out with some decent pieces that I found and we'll work our way to my favorite pieces at the very end. So you have to stay tuned to the very end of this video to see my favorite pieces and how I style them. First up, we have this Martinsville, Virginia racing t-shirt. It has this graphic on the front that's very Budweiser-esque, which is why I picked it up. I thought it was unique, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was a Budweiser t-shirt at first, and then I realized that it wasn't. It's kind of just like this, this really small, like racing t-shirt kind of a thing. Um, it is a Delta medium weight t-shirt. So one of the things that I look for when I'm searching for vintage clothing is that I make sure it's gonna be a nice heavy weight because I know if it is, then it's gonna hold up better in the wash and it's gonna wash and wear better over time. And usually these cuts, when they are a heavy weight fabric like this and they're like an XL or a double XL and they've been washed and dried, you know, hundreds of times, they shrink to a pretty decent size, which would be a nice oversized large for me. So that's why I picked this up. This is an XL. It doesn't look like the graphic has too much wear and tear. It's definitely been dried and washed a handful of times because there is a little bit of cracking in the, in the white and stuff like that. But otherwise, this t-shirt is in really, really good condition. Most of the reasons that I like this one is because I like the colors, I like the graphic. Again, it does resemble Budweiser, so I thought that was kind of cool. Vintage Budweiser-esque tee, stuff like that. Next up, we have a t-shirt. It's kind of lame. <laughs> now, the reason that I chose to purchase this weird logo t-shirt has this stuff on the back, Athletic Republic, unlevel the playing field. Trademark. So the reason I chose to go with this weird t-shirt with this unrelated weird graphic on it was mainly because I like the fit of the t-shirt and I like the wash. Um, a popular thing to do is to have a vintage t-shirt or you know something like that with a graphic on the inside and for people to wear it inside out. So that's what I plan to do with this t-shirt. I, I strictly bought this because I like the fit, I like the wash, I don't care about the graphics, so I'm gonna wear this inside out. I'm gonna wear it as a layering piece kind of a thing. So let me just flip it inside out so I can show you what I mean by that. All right, and there we go, it's inside out now. This is the reason that I picked this up, because I like the wash inside out. Obviously, if my neck was here, you wouldn't be able to see that graphic on the back. Um, but the graphic is so subtle, you can kind of see the details right there, but you can't really tell what it is. And when you wear a t-shirt inside out like this, it's not necessarily a bad thing, because I like the texture that it adds on the seams right here, and then on the top, and then also down here at the bottom. Just gives it a little bit of extra character, and then around the collar as well. I like that kind of textured look. So it, it creates a little bit of depth rather than just wearing a plain faded black t-shirt. The only thing that I have a complaint with this one is, is this like, this embroidered, not even embroidered, this like sticker like logo on the back, like graphic logo on the back for the tag size. And I'm wondering if any of you guys know how I can get this off, comment down below because I'm trying to figure out how to get it off without damaging the color of the shirt or without literally taking a knife to it and possibly cutting my finger off. <laughs> so if you know how to get this logo off, please, please drop it in the comments down below because I cannot figure it out. All right, next up, we have another one of those weird graphic t-shirts that I bought strictly because I like the wash. 
Now the wash on this one is a super, super faded black. This is almost gray at this point. And also on the collar, there's some subtle distressing. Again, I bought this t-shirt because I like the wash and I like the fit. So I'm gonna wear this one inside out too. All right, and there we go. I didn't wanna make you guys sit through me, you know, flipping this shirt inside out again. But again, just like the other one, I love the wash on this one. I love the subtle details. Wearing it inside out, you can see the stitching. The fade on this is perfect. The distressing on the collar is incredible. I just love the fit of this t-shirt. It's one of my favorite ones that I found. But again, it has that stupid sticker size tag on the back. So help brother out. Help me out. Drop it in the comments. How do you get this off? Because if I can get this off, this t-shirt would be perfect. Oh, but I forgot to mention, if I'm wearing those two pieces as a layering piece under like a flannel or under a jacket, doesn't really matter about the size tag. So if you wanted to go out and buy some oversized t-shirts and faded vintage t-shirts like this and you've had the same problem with the stupid tag that won't come off because it's a logo freaking printed on there with some weird stickering, then just wear something over top of it if you don't want to peel it off. Next up, I have a piece that I actually don't really like that much. This is a Fireball Whiskey t-shirt. I don't know why I, I chose to buy this. I thought that it was a good idea at the time, but then when I came home, I, I, I was really upset with myself that I, I spent like $2 on this because I don't like Fireball Whiskey. I've had a very bad experience with Fireball Whiskey, so I don't know why I bought this. So I'm probably gonna sell this or give it to somebody because I just, I, I don't want this. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of us out there that have had a bad experience with Fireball Whiskey. It's just, it's just not a good drink, you know? It's not a good idea to drink Fireball Whiskey, ever. All right, now we're moving on to some of my favorite stuff. Like I said, guys, I saved the best for last. So I have this doghouse. Myrtle Beach Harley Davidson t-shirt. I freaking love this shirt. I went thrift shopping because I wanted to find like a vintage Harley t-shirt. I wanted to find like a vintage band t-shirt and that's what I found with this piece. This piece is literally amazing. It's perfect. The fit is right. The coloring is right. The graphic is incredible. Incredible. The graphic is incredible. And I absolutely love this t-shirt. I've already worn this like five times since I've got it like within the last two weeks because I just love this shirt so much. I cannot wait to layer this piece in the wintertime. This is gonna look so sick. And this is also a dope summertime t-shirt as well. Just wearing something oversized like this, it's, it's perfect. It is a Delta Pro Weight t-shirt. So again, it's still got that heavyweight fit. It's been shrunk in the washer and dryer. It was a double XL, but it fits kind of like an XL would right now. Um, gives you this nice really oversized baggy look and then the graphic on the front and the back is in really good shape Some minor cracking here and there, but other than that, it's it's not bad at all This is a sick piece. I'm so excited about this one next up I got a layering piece and that is this lands in button-up shirt now This could be worn and I'm assuming that it was worn originally from the previous person as a regular like everyday dress shirt but for me, it's a little bit oversized, so I wouldn't necessarily wear it that way. I would wear this as a jacket. It's almost got this super thick, waxy kind of feel to it. It feels like this shirt has been starched before, which means that they essentially took it to the dry cleaner and made it feel really stiff. So I like that because it allows me to feel like I can wear this as a shirt jacket. Um, something light in the fall, something just to add a layer piece, something like that. So I thought this was a really dope look. It looked really good when I was wearing uh, my brown or tan Fear of God Essentials t-shirt underneath. I thought that was a nice layering piece on top. And I think this will be cool. Uh, I'm excited to see what I can put together with this one for sure. And last but not least, we're moving on to the final piece, which is this Burberry-esque flannel shirt. When I saw this hanging on the rack, it kind of I kind of caught me off guard. I was like, whoa, <laughs> what is that? But I pulled it out. No tag on it anywhere, like the tag has just been ripped off, sadly. I don't know if this is Burberry or not. Um, based on what it says, it's 100% acrylic made in Guatemala. It's probably not Burberry. Um, I feel like Burberry would be a little bit more higher quality than acrylic and, and so forth, but this, this is a sick piece. It looks pretty much like Burberry. The pattern, everything's the same. The fit on this is oversized. I wore this the other day 
with this outfit and it looked absolutely incredible. I love this look. Um, and you could even do something like tie this around your waist as just, again, another layering piece. But this flannel is absolutely awesome. Probably one of my favorite pickups from this entire haul. So guys, like I said, I wanted to give you some tips and tricks for things that I look for and stuff that I do when I go into shopping like this. So the main things that I'm looking for when I go into shopping is I'm looking for the right size, the right fit, the right color and also if it's hype or not, essentially. So obviously you wanna look for the right size, but it's tricky when it comes to vintage shopping because all the stuff that you find most of the time has been washed a lot. So really an extra large will fit like a large and a medium will fit like a small and so forth. It's it just how it is. When something gets dried, it gets shrunk over time, it, it just shrinks the fabric. So size up when you go vintage shopping and usually you'll get the right size that you're looking for, at least just one size. Next thing is I'm looking for the right color. Um, I'm also looking at the graphic on the t-shirt as well. If the color is a black t-shirt, I want that to be like a faded, grayed out, washed out black that looks like it's been washed in the washing machine and dried hundreds of times. It's got a ton of wear in it, almost so much that the fabric feels softer than it should for a heavyweight t-shirt. That's what I'm looking for, that faded black t-shirt. And if I'm looking for something like a gray or a white, um, obviously I want the whites to be a little bit more white, not so much of a cream color because I think that's kind of nasty looking. Um, same thing with gray t-shirts. Gray t-shirts can be, the, the gray shirts can be a little bit more worn. Um, I'm not so much concerned about that as I am to the, to the black ones uh, or the white ones, but yeah, color is everything. I want it to have a faded vintage look because I am vintage shopping. And if it's a hype piece, I need to make sure that if it's like a Harley Davidson t-shirt, the graphic looks good, or if it's an NBA shirt, or you know, like a Burberry kind of looking flannel, stuff like that, I wanna make sure that, you know, they look like decent pieces. They don't look like I, I found them in the garbage, essentially. I need to make sure that if it's a hype piece, that it looks really, really nice. And that's pretty much it, guys. Vintage shopping is all based on your preference, though. Like, you go in there and you find pieces that you like, just based on what you like. Like, I can't tell you what to go look for in a thrift store uh, or, or vintage. Like, that's just, you gotta go in there and you gotta trust your gut and you gotta find what you wanna find. And another thing that I would suggest is that I used to hate vintage shopping. Like, my wife would drag me to the Goodwill all the time, like, look for stuff, you're gonna find some stuff. Like, I find stuff here all the time. And I'm like, I can't find anything here. Nothing, t-shirts, jeans, nothing. That's another thing. Jeans, can't find pants in a thrift store ever. I have tried and tried. It, it, it's impossible. I have determined it impossible, so that's why I, I paired all of these tops with bottoms that I already own. Because I cannot find pants in a thrift store. It's not, it cannot happen, ever. She would always tell me, you need to keep going back and looking for pieces again and again and again because they're always bringing in new stuff. You might not find stuff the first time you go or even the second time or even the third time that you go, but eventually you will find pieces that you like. I went to two separate Goodwills to get these pieces, one near me and one near my wife's parents. Um, so the one near my wife's parents was significantly better than mine for whatever reason, um, but you know, it, it all just depends on what they get in. So don't get discouraged if you go the first time and you can't find anything. Just keep looking, keep your eyes peeled, and maybe you can find some really cool shit. All right, guys, before we close out today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Rose Gold and Black. They are my favorite jewelry company. You saw a lot of their pieces that I was wearing with the outfits today, and I really, really love their stuff. It helps me take my style game to the next level. Like, if I'm wearing a pretty simple plain outfit and I throw on some Rose Gold and Black, it's gonna kick it up one notch just because I have a jewelry piece on. So if you guys are looking to improve your style, click on the link in the description of this video. Head over to rosegoldandblack.com. Get yourself some awesome jewelry pieces at an incredibly discounted price on your boy. All right guys, and that wraps it up for today's video. If you like the video, give it a big fat thumbs up down below. Drop your comments in the comment section. Let me know what kind of videos you wanna see next. And do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you have not already and turn on your post notifications. I will see you guys next week. I'm out.